Okay, I'm getting ready to stitch the MT Bobbins block. If you're doing the background quilting, right here on page two, they're talking about these applique blocks, and this first chart tells you the batting size that you need in order to make for the correct trim size. And so I just went through the entire pattern book and did a count. And I put all that right here, and I will put this in the description box of this video. I might do it for every video, I don't know. But what I did was I went ahead and just like how the pattern has you pre-cut all your fabrics, I went ahead and pre-cut all of my batting as well and put them into bags. It just makes it easier. I don't have to stop and cut anything now. And this is just for the applique blocks. Down here, this chart is for your borders and the pieced blocks, which is, are going to be your flying geese and your pinwheels. But it just made it a lot easier to go through the pattern book and do all of that. Okay, so just uh, my easiest way to do this is when I am going to be cutting my stabilizer, I put the hoop handle, the arm of the hoop, I hang it just where I can see like a half an inch of stabilizer through these holes. And I hang the handle off the side of the edge of the stabilizer and I just cut about an inch and a half away. And that's it. So you don't have to get all crazy about stabilizer sizes. It just needs to be larger than the hoop. Okay. And this is a no-show light poly mesh. It's very stable. All right. I'm going to tighten it. You want to finger tighten it and then recess the hoop just a hair where you can just kind of feel that it's just a little deeper and that's going to tighten that up real nice. And then I'm going to put my fabric. I'm actually going to put my points on lines on my big mat. And that just makes it easier too. And I am matching up the V's in the fabric with the top and bottom notches. And I'm going to pull it down so that the V's on the side match the notches here. So I know that this is centered in the hoop. And this tells me everything is going to fit. I need one five by seven square. So I'll grab that out of my 5x7 bag of batting and I can kind of get an idea now of how this is going to look. Just like that. Now if your fabric isn't this big, this is because I cut mine just a little bit larger than the pattern called for so that uh, the background quilting that I'm doing, it, if it draws it up, that's okay. My block won't be too small. So we are ready to get started and stitch out MT Bobbins. Let's go to the machine. Okay, this is the Brother Luminaire and all embroidery machines function basically the same. And this particular pattern doesn't require any of the fancy stuff that the Luminaire can do. So I'm just gonna touch my screen and if you have a sewing and embroidery combo machine, it's going to have a couple of choices for you in your menu. On this particular machine, it has sewing, embroidery, Disney, and My Design Center. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Let me return. I'm going to go back to home. So if I was to hit sewing right now, the embroidery arm would move way to the other side of the machine and allow me room to do some sewing. But I want to do embroidery. Uh, Disney is if you want to make something with the Disney design and uh, the design center and this is to create designs from nothing whether you scan in a design or maybe you uh, want to use some presets that are in here and put them together in your own way but this entire quilt I'm going to be using the embroidery functions on this home screen, the button that I'll use most of the time is the home button up here. It looks like a little house. And then down here, these first two rows of icons are for designs that are in the machine when the machine came from the manufacturer. 
So there's all different kinds of designs and there are lots of videos to tell you what's available in there. But this third row icon right here, this is the pocket. And Brother uses this to indicate the memory. So I'm going to touch the pocket memory. And I've got a few designs in here already that I've saved myself. But this first row of icons, the sewing machine means this is a design. See how it's highlighted in blue? And then there are designs down here. These, I keep touching stuff. <laughs> This, so the sewing machine is for designs that I created and I saved in the machine myself. Didn't come from the manufacturer. And this is the universal symbol for USB. You can use a chip or you could send the designs wirelessly. I have these designs on a USB stick, so I'm gonna touch USB. And let's see, yeah, that's the one. I'm gonna touch it and you can see here, I had a design I had scanned in already. I need to clear that. Let me hit set. And I'm gonna go up to my settings, this page up here at the top. Background image is on page 10. I'm gonna hit delete. Okay to delete, okay. And now let me click okay. And there, now we can see it real clear without any of the picture behind it from something I'd been scanning earlier. It was a bag I was making. And we are ready to go. Now if you recall when I was talking about how to put these designs together, the very first stitch where the color of the stitch really matters is for me going to be a dark gray because that is what I'm going to use for the background quilting design. So I'm just ready to go. All I need to do is touch embroidery and it has set it and it's ready to go. I'm not gonna mess with centering or anything. I did all of that in Embrilliance and so I don't need to worry about doing that at all. So if you don't have embroidery software and this works pretty much the same on all embroidery machines, you want to get to the first design that you're gonna bring in. I'm gonna go back to my USB stick and I was playing around and here is the background quilting for the boo hoop, all right? So I'm just for an example, let me show you how to do this. I'm gonna bring in the background quilting first and touch that. And then I'm gonna to touch this button down here, set. And that sets the background quilting. Now I want to also do add. We have a button for add. If your machine allows you to merge designs, you would hit an add button. Well, it wants to know where do I want to get it from. I could use a design that's already in the machine, but I'm going to use the pocket memory. I'm going to go to my USB again. And now I want to choose the boo hoop and hit set. And now we have both designs ready to stitch out. And because I did the background quilting first, and it tells you right here, uh, this screen allows you to see which design is going to stitch in which, which order. So it's going to stitch the background quilting and then the applique design, or the embroidery design. So that's how you do it. You can load both of them on your USB stick and pull them up one at a time merge the designs using the add button. But I'm going to go and just hit delete right now because I want to go back. See it deleted just the one. And I want to stitch my MT bobbins. So I'm going to go back to my USB stick and it's right here. And I'm going to tell it set and we are ready to go. All I need to do right now is hit embroidery. Push this in, I need gray thread. And then this has an automatic needle threader, so I'm just gonna press this button. I'm using an Organ 7511 needle. Brother and Baby Lock machines are timed at the factory with Organ needles, so if you have a Brother or a Baby Lock and you're using a different brand and you're experiencing lots of thread breaks, I suggest take a look in your accessories kit 
because organ needles came with the machine. And then I'm also using a pre-wound, this is a pre-wound 90 weight bobbin. And it's going to stitch out the placement line for the batting. I recommend that you wear a pair of glasses or some other sort of eye protection. Um, it's entirely possible for a needle to break and a tip to fly. I've seen it happen personally. You don't want that in your eye. I'm just going to put the batting down and press the button and go. You want to make sure your batting covers your placement stitch by half an inch or so. And it's going to go around twice to secure the batting. Now you need to remove the hoop from the machine. If you are not doing the background quilting, you will not be doing this part at all. Okay. Now, you want to use a pair of curved embroidery scissors. These are Gingers. I have all of this stuff that I have right here in my Amazon store if you are interested in looking at it. Um, these are things that I recommend to use or use myself. And you want to put the round part flat. Don't turn it sideways like this or that. You want it to be flat and it will trim the batting very close to the stitch line without cutting your stitches. It's important to do this so that your batting doesn't cause too much bulk in your seam allowances when it comes time to put the quilt together. All right, that looks great. You're definitely gonna want a trash can next to you while you're making these blocks. And now I'm going to put the hoop back in the machine. When you're putting your hoop back in the machine, you always want to put your hand on top of the arm. It's very easy to accidentally, if you do this, to shove it too hard. And if you shove it too hard, your, this piece right here will get out of alignment. And that's going to mess up where your needle needs to get back into position. I'm just going to hit go. And I am just going to lay this out and make sure that my center notches are even with the center notches top and bottom, side to side. And that's perfect right there. That's going to look great. So now it's going to do the tack down stitch for the background fabric. This tells me how long these are going to take. It has a one minute there, so I guess it'll just take a minute. All right, here we go. Next is the placement line for the headstone. And I'm going to make sure that my fabric is covering the entire outline by at least half an inch. That's nice and straight. Okay. Now it's going to tack it down. You can tape it if you want. That's what they tell you to do in the book. I just hold down my finger. <laughs> Keep your hands out of the embroidery field. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> if you're not experienced at embroidery and you're not familiar with your machine, you need to use the tape. This particular design is one that they tell you uh, not to trim the fabric until after the inscription stitching is done. Okay, next is the inscription, and I need to do a thread color change to black. This says it's going to take five minutes. OK, 
Okay, now you want to remove the hoop from the machine and we're going to trim this outer fabric away for the final stitch. Oh, my poor machine's shaking like crazy. All done. Okay, we're finished embroidering. Remove the hoop from the machine. So now I need to trim it. The pattern says to trim it to four and a half by six and a half. So I'm gonna remove this, take this out. So simple. So this is an orange pop ruler. And what I'm gonna do is put this on here and center this so that we are trimming to four and a half by six and a half. And what I'm doing is I am lining up the grid lines with my notches in my fabric so I know that my design is not wonky at all. So now I'm just going to press this in here into this slot and I'm going to cut like that. Here's where your rotary mat earns its keep. Press down and cut. Now, I'm just cutting this one at this time. Most of these blocks I will cut when it's all said and done. Press in and cut. And if you notice, I'm not cutting over here, I'm cutting over here. So, look at that. The block came right out. It is absolutely perfect. Look at that. Isn't that adorable? Okay, so I'm just going to take this block and I'm going to put it into the empty bobbins bag. This is awesome. 